All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome back to our Bible study. It's wonderful evening. I hope and pray everybody's doing well out there. Having an awesome day, an awesome week, awesome beginning of your year. Amen. Beginning of your month. And we're truly grateful to God for allowing us to see another day today. And we hope and pray everybody's doing well. Amen. So we are looking forward to what God's going to do here in this Bible study. We are, uh, encourage you to share out the, the links, share out the YouTube link, and share out the Facebook uh, on your page. Share it out with your friends this year. Amen. And let somebody say, hey, come on over to the Bible study. The, the world needs the world needs the word. It needs the word of God. And so uh, one of our running things is put the new good news in their news feed. Put some good news in the people's news feed. So we encourage you to, if you're on Facebook, just hit share. Hit share uh, over on your page and share it over to your page. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the word of God. Amen. It's a blessing for, again, others to know about the, the, the God that you believe in. So share it out. Share it out with your friends and loved ones. And I go over and hit the thumbs up, all that good stuff. Why is it important? Again, it, uh, the way the internet works, it draws in the algorithms and all these different things that, again, uh, the scientists, and I mean, not the scientists, but technology has, again, it, it, it's able to attract in more viewers, believe it or not. And so we the more the merrier to come join us on our Bible study. Again, it's an awesome blessing to be able to hear the word of God. So we encourage you to do that with us. Amen. And continue to support the the, the, the the online broadcast. We also have podcasts as well. Podcasts as well. I'll share that with you. Uh, we, we can go through a pod bean or we have various places that we hardly we talk about it much, but through tune in radio, uh, iHeart radio, you can find us on these same, same links, uh, uh, uh the podcasts and, and Google cast, all these different places, platforms that we've been uh, uh, able to uh, share these uh, information out. So, Make it a part of your day. Make the word of God, the teachings of God. If you can't catch it now, you'll catch it later. Or catch it again, over and over again. If you, once you subscribe to various uh, platforms, again, it'll be a blessing to you. And so we're thankful to God today for another opportunity to be able to bring forth his word. We want to, uh, today we're going to cover the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, this being the third day of the month. Uh, again, let me share with you a proverb a day keeps the devil at bay. And so uh, Proverbs 3 is an awesome proverb. Proverb as we will cover today. Uh, again, we tend to do this throughout the throughout the year, uh, various uh, times. Uh, again, we'll hit a proverb to cover uh, the day of the week. And so uh, where, where does this come from? There's 31 books, uh, 31 human days in, in a month, typically. Some months are less, some months a little bit less. But uh, we, we typically try to practice that, reading the proverb a day according to the date. And it's not, it's not something that... <laughs> It's just an old practice that many follow. It's a blessing. It keeps you in the word of God. Say sometimes you may not know what to read. Well, a proverb, again, will help you along the way. So it's a book of wisdom, book of wisdom written by the wisest man. Again, the Bible had declared a man who prayed for wisdom. The Bible tells us to do that. We should ask for wisdom, ask for wisdom. We don't know what to do. Seek God's face. And that's what exactly this man Solomon did. Solomon is the son of David, King David. He asked for wisdom because why he was taking over the throne. He was taking over the throne and he did not know what to do. And so in your life, throughout your days going forward, if you don't know what to do, say, God, show me, God, give me wisdom. Give me a discretion on how to navigate my life. And truly he will do that. And so the book of Proverbs, awesome, awesome book. And we'll, we'll go in chapter three, this, this day and cover some of them. Let's go. The Bible says, my son, keep my law. Uh, and so now Solomon was passing it on to his his children as well. He says, "My son, keep thy law, my law, not my forget, not my law. Excuse me." He says, "But let thine heart keep my commandments." So don't forget the laws of God is what he was saying. Hide this law, and, and really, his father said the same thing in, in Psalms one nineteen. He says, "Hide thy word in my heart, that I may not sin against you." And so. Hiding the word of God or keeping the law. Don't forget what God said in his word. We we live in a world where people are forgetting God. A nation, the Bible says, woe unto a people that forget God. Woe. In other words, uh, great calamity and really a tragedy comes upon a people when we say no to God. Fool has said no to God. So he says, forget not the law. When we, when we find more important things to do than to worship God, and, and more important things to do than to read the word, uh, again, the more important things to do we find ourselves in trouble. So he encouraged us. Words of wisdom for this year, for your life, for your days going forward. Don't forget the word of God. Don't forget the word of God. Even in our founding of our nation, uh, again, they 
uh, included the word of God. They knew, they knew and understood the importance of being grounded upon the word of God. Let's go a little further. The Bible says for length of days and long life and peace, they shall add to thee. So length of days, some of the value of the word, some of the values of the laws of God and keeping God's commandments, you will find length of days, long life. It will sustain you. It will keep you. Now, are some lives cut short? Yes. Why? Uh, when they're living for God, it's not always the case. But you know what? Again, it will sustain you along the way. It keeps you at peace, the Bible says, and your long life and peace. You will have peace every day of your life. Peace in the midst of some of the hottest battles of your life. There will be peace because you have the law and the word hidden in your hearts. The Bible says they shall add to thee. Number three says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Can you imagine mercy and truth saying, no, I'm not having any dealings with you anymore. <laughs> Do not forsake mercy and truth and don't let mercy and truth forsake you. The Bible says, bind them about thy neck. He says, write them upon the tables of thy heart. So hide that in your heart. Truth in your heart. Live in the word of God, which is true. Never be truthful in everything you do. And not only that, but he says, do what? He says, forget not, for, uh, forsake not mercy. That it, uh, and also is mercy. Uh, I was reminded of a scripture in Matthew 5, 7. We'll just come back to Proverbs. I'm not going to mess around too much today. Matthew 5, 7. It tells us this, again, about being merciful. Because, because again, one day, one day, um, we may need God's mercy. And so the Bible says, don't forsake it. Don't forsake it. Learn it. Practice it. Uh, the Bible says here, blessed is the, are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. When you need mercy. One day, we're going to need mercy. One day. And so it's important to be merciful to others. Again, and so you think about that, how that, again, let's watch how we conduct our lives and live our lives because, again, one day we will need God's mercy. Amen. And others to show mercy on us. Number four, this is key. He says, so shall thy find favor. Back to Proverbs 3, 4. He says, so shall thy find favor. You'll find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Let's read it again. So when we don't forsake mercy and truth, you stand on it. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 4, the Bible says, so shalt thou find favor. Because you do this, you'll find favor. We all need favor. God's hand upon your life. God's hand and God's love upon your life and good understanding. Good understanding. The Bible says in, in the sight of God and man. So again, you say, well, I'm good with God, but I'm not good with my fellow man. That's a problem. That's a problem. If you if you want God to be merciful, if you want God to be forgiven to you, we must do the same thing to others. The same thing to others. Again, if we want God to treat us right, we got to treat others right. On and on and on. And so again, he says, we will find favor in the sight of God and man. If you're having problems with man, again, it's day because perhaps we were not merciful along the way. Along the way. <laughs> Uh, uh, over time, it becomes a common denominator uh, in people's lives. Again, you think about how folks, some folks just can't get along with anybody, can't get along with much. And, and so we, over time, over time, you begin to say, hold up, wait a minute. Maybe it's not everybody else. Maybe it's the person or you and I. And so we must continue to uh, live our lives to endeavor to find favor with God and man, to be pleasing in God's eyes, most importantly. And when we do that, God will show favor in our lives as well. Think about Joseph. Think about uh, so many others in the word of God that, that found favor. Daniel found favor in, in the sight of God and man. Because, again, they, they obeyed God's word. They did what God told them to do. And along the way, they found favor in the sight of God and man. Let's go to verse 5. He says, trust in the Lord. One of the most quoted Proverbs there is. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Not part of your heart, all your heart. Everything about it, trust him. Again, believe it beyond what we see. We shared a few weeks ago. Get a chance to go back and listen to the message about believing beyond what we see and how it looks. Again, he says, trust the Lord with all their heart. Lean not on their own understanding. Your own understanding how we view it to work, how we view it, how it's going to play out, how we view it. Don't lean on it because it may blow you away how it plays out. It may blow you away. He said, lean not on your understanding. Number six, he said, in all thy ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him, entreat of him, ask of him, bless him, thank him, 
Give him glory in all your ways. He says, uh, he says that he shall direct thy path. He shall direct thy path. When you think about this in life, again, you ask God to help you. Ask God to cover you. Ask God to uh, keep you every day. He will direct your path. So again, lean not on your own understanding. I'm going to figure this out on my own. No, we need God's direction. That's why the Bible talks about we need the Holy Ghost. It's a guide. It's a guide unto us. It's a guide in our lives. The Bible says in verse 6 again, he says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. If you think about this, in life, in life, uh, he shall direct it. He will direct it. He will keep you every day of your life. Every day, every step of the way. The Bible talks about order my steps. Order my steps in the Lord. Order my ways, God. Order my thoughts. Order my life. Direct my path. I don't know which way to turn, to the left or to the right. Order my steps in you, God, I pray. He says, how the, again, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And watch God work things out. God, I'm putting you first in this situation. I'm putting you first in that situation. He will direct thy path. He will show you the way. Let's go to verse 7. He says, be not wise in thine own in thine own eyes. And that's many times where mankind fails. We all fail being wise in our own eyes. Again, with, uh, putting it in our own hands, thinking we can work it out ourselves instead of letting God work it out. Taking matters into your own hands. The Bible says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. And so uh, mankind runs into a lot of trouble because we are right in our own eyes. We're wise in our own eyes. I'm going to do it my way. This is my interpretation of it. This is the way I see it. This is the way it's going to be. This is the way how I feel. On and on, this is what my belief in God is. This is how I, I, I view God, or whatever the case may be. This is how I'm going to do it. This is my life. This is how I'm going to live it. And you can do that. God dies, not going to make us robots. But when you do that, be prepared for the consequences for not following God, not following the order of God, not following God's word, doing what he says in his word, according to his plan and his purpose. The Bible says, uh, uh, he says, I fear... Uh, the, be not wise, I want to fear the Lord and depart from evil. Let me fear God. You know what? I'm not going to take matters in my own hand. I'm going to fear God. Obey what God says do. Obey how God says do it. And then we'll go from there. Depart from evil. Depart from evil. The enemy will try to put evil in our hearts. Ill will in our hearts. Evil thoughts, evil uh, things in our hearts to get us to make bad decisions. He said depart from evil. Depart from sin. Depart from things that will separate us from God. Depart from it. That's why we got to trust in God the whole way. The Bible says in number eight, he says, it shall be health to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bones. You live a healthy life. You live a blessed life. You live a, a, a pure life. You, you feel better. You look better. Amen. You, 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 things work out better. Health, again, and health tells a story a lot of times. Of what's happening on the inside of our lives heart problems, uh, depression, and all these different things that goes on in people's lives, high blood pressure, on and on and on, all these different things, a lot of times stem from something else. It stems from something else, and really it's a spiritual thing. The Bible says what? His, his, uh, the, the writer John, his, yeah, it was John, he says, I would that you would uh, prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And so it starts with the spiritual. When the soul is prospering, Again, a lot of times the health will as well. But again, we know we're all frail dirt anyway. So again, eventually it will break down regardless. You can try to keep every dot and tittle. You can remember the word of God for us and back. You can live the word of God. And eventually we will still all have to die. So don't lose the victory when you get sick and die. All right. But again, it, it keeps you, it sustains you along the way. And even through sickness, we know we can call on God. And it's nothing like a healthy soul. A healthy soul, a healthy mind, spiritual mind. Remain healthy in your spiritual mind, spiritual being. Let's move on. The Bible says in verse 8, 9, verse 9, he tells us to do what? Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. <laughs> Honor the Lord, first of all. Let's pause right there for a minute. Honor the Lord. Bless the Lord. Putting God first. Making him above us to exalt him. And so the Bible says, honor the Lord with thy substance, which is what you have. This is a reference to tithing. This is what it says, and, and, and with the fir, with the fruits, first fruits of thine increase, the first fruits of your increase, that's off the top, in other words, the first fruits of your increase. Um, 
Think about 10%. The first 10% goes to God. You get paid, the first 10% goes to God. If you want to be blessed in this year, tithe, T-I-T-H-E. This is a reference to tithing. Your first fruits, top 10% of your gross at that. Don't, don't give that off your net. Uh, again, it's not going to work that way. Off your gross. That's even more faith to give off your gross. And that's what God says anyway. Your increase. Your increase. And so, as a believer, tithing is important. Tithing, giving to the Lord, is important. The Bible says, honor the Lord with thy substance. This belongs to you, God. I'm giving this to you. And it's really a way of blessing uh, the ministers, blessing the church. Really, again, that's God's way of helping me go full time as well. The pastor, whatever, whoever your pastor, if I'm not your pastor, wherever you tithe, again, your pastor, he's your pastor. And so supports, again, his living, his way of living. And so he supports that and also the ministry, various things. And so it's first fruits of the increase. The Bible says, so shall thy barns be filled, your barns be filled. God says when you give and bless with your fruits, you bless the Lord, you bless somebody, something else. The law of sowing and reaping is so how much more when you bless the house of the Lord. The law of sowing and reaping, the Bible says your barns shall be plenty. I didn't write it. Your barns shall be plenty. And many don't have faith to do that. And they wonder why they never have or they broke, can't make ends meet. I'm telling you because you failed the time. Never tithe. Some people come to church for almost eight to 15, 20, 18 years and never tithe. Never. Never, never, never. Again, they may give an envelope, 10 bucks here, 20 bucks there, but that's not tithing. That's not tithing. It's only a handful that do that. Tithe. If you follow reading, following this uh, service and I are you part of our church, start tithing this year. It's a commandment of God. The Bible says, it's your barn shall be filled with plenty. You will be blessed. Give. Give unto the Lord. The Bible says, and thy precious shall burst out with new wine. You want me to contain what God has for you. New blessings, new things, new prosperous things will come because of that. Because you tithe unto the Lord. And amen. Again, it's important. And so the devil has, has taken that and taken tithing. And he has made it into a mockery. Again, he'll, he'll showcase and show uh, put on the news people who have corrupted the finances of the church. He'll parade people on the, on the newspapers and various things all over there. How they have I've done all these things. Uh, one man had a million dollars worth of jewelry on it. Serving again, and when the devil will use those things to to do what to uh, dissuade people from giving, to dissuade people from giving. But you give unto the Lord. So what the Bible says: Give to God. Forget it. it's on them. God's gonna judge them if they misuse the finances. You know what I'm saying? So give unto the Lord and your barn shall be filled. If you want to bless it, if you want to be a true believer in Christ, <laughs> we got 90% Christians. What's the other 10%? I'm a 90% Christian preacher. That I'm missing that 10% in giving. But you got to be 100% Christian. Amen? And so part of that, to be a 100% Christian, tithe it and offer it. It belongs to God. So tithe 10%. You got paid this past Friday or whatever it was, give God. You got paid on the first, whatever it is. Give unto the Lord, tithing. Amen. We, that's probably the longest you've ever heard me teach about giving. Maybe I need to do it more. We should. Because I'm basically you keeping back your blessing. Keeping back your blessing. And so God's blessed you with a job. God's blessed you with things. God blesses you with uh, income. Income belongs to him. Amen. We don't belong to him. We don't belong to ourselves. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says we, we don't belong to ourselves. Amen. So you give unto him. Hmm? Yeah. yeah I have my wife, my wife, she's helping me in Bible study. And so uh, she was telling me about the woman with two mites. She gave from her heart. She gave from her heart. And because she gave from her heart. And the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. God blessed her. But with more than what those who grudgingly gave with. So tithe, tithe, T-H-T-I-E. The Bible says uh, we're about to teach that. Coming up. All right, let's go to uh, verse 11, Proverbs 11. The Bible says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. He says, Even as the Father, the Son, in whom he delighted. So again, even in that, correcting and, and giving. Again, you're wrong for not tithing. You're wrong for not tithing. 
So start tithing. If you're sleeping around, shacking up, whatever the case may be, living in sin, it's wrong. Whatever the case may be. And so we say, but, but we receive it. When you love Jesus, when you love God, when you're going to be a true Christian, you say, God, I, Pastor, I believe that now. I believe that. I see it in the word. I believe it. I'm going to start doing that. In spite of what it happened. Lean not on your own understanding. We just got to read the verse about lean not on my own understanding. People can quote that scripture left and right. But when it's time to give, oh, oh preacher, I, I can't because, because uh, you know, the money don't add up. Don't lean on your own understanding. God will provide. The Lord is Jehovah Jireh. People quote all these stories in the Bible, how God does these things, but can't believe God enough to tie But let's get back. Despise not the chase of the Lord. So the chase, the correction of God, the word of God. That's what the Bible talks about. Pastors and preachers and apostles are there to do what? To correct the saints, to correct the saints. And so don't despise correction. Some people can't take it. You can't take it and they will fight. They will fight back. They will kick, scratch, fight back, talk back to the preacher, to the elders. They will do this. They despise chastening. And so don't be that way. Remember how I remember like folks again, yeah, but that yeah, but crowd. All right, whatever, do what you're gonna do. You know. Uh and so we look at it, don't despise the chasing God, correct me, God. If I need to be correct, straighten me out, God. Let me get it right. Let that be attitude. The Bible says, as a father loves a son, so does God do the same thing for us. Let's go to verse 13. We gotta move on. The Bible says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, the Bible says. He says, and the man that getteth understanding 14, for it, for the merchandise of it is better than merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. So finding wisdom, finding the word of God, finding Christ in your life is far greater than anything else. It's better than silver, better than gold. Again, Peter told that blind man, that he says, uh, 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 the lame man, excuse me, the lame man at the gate, he says, silver and gold have I not. I don't have money to offer you. He said, if I can give you Jesus. Having Christ would take you a whole lot further than the next twenty dollars. Preacher, just give me a couple of dollars, 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 a couple of dollars ain't gonna get it. You need Jesus. Once you get Jesus down in your heart, God will bless you, keep you, put you in a position to where you will never have to be a seed begging for bread. The Bible goes on and says it is far better than merchandise. The game there is better than fine gold. Word of God is valuable. Don't just throw it out. Don't just let it collect dust on the table. That's the most valuable thing in your house, believe it or not. It's the most valuable thing. It's the most, if you have it on your phone, it's the most valuable app. It's better than Candy Crush and all these other things. It's the most valuable app. It's the, well, now we got to say app now. It's the most valuable thing in your life. That's the word of God. The Bible goes on. She is more precious than rubies, 15. And all that, that, that thou, the things that thou canst desire cannot be compared to her. Nothing can compare to the wisdom of almighty God. The Bible says length of days are in her right hand. And in her left hand are riches and all. There is again, God, there's so much riches in the word of God. You learn it. Let it be a part of you. A woman, a man who knows the word of God is full of riches full of treasure, full of power, knowing the word of God, living the word of God, applying the word, not just knowing it, but you got to apply it as well. The Bible goes on and says, verse 17, her ways are the ways of pleasantness. Her path is of peace. It's talking about the word. And she is a tree of life to them that lay hold on her. Happy is the one that retaineth her. And so thank God it's life. It's life. It picks you up. It turns you around. Reading that word of God is like food. The Bible compared to it as food. Uh, uh, here, compared to it as merchandise. It's far greater than these things. It's a spiritual power that mankind needs. And that's why the devil wants us not to touch it. He does not want us to read it. He does not want us to hear it because he knows how valuable that it is. The Bible says to retain it, to keep it. Let's read the last verse again. She's a tree of light to them that lay hold on her. Happy is the one that retaineth her. You got to keep it as well. You can't just read it and just throw it away. Ah, I used to, I told a man, talk to a man on the day, uh, text the microphone, man. Ah, I used to go to church for 30 years. Why, why'd you stop? You got to retain that thing. You got to retain that thing, live it in your heart. Don't throw it away. Retain it. Keep it every day of your life. And you find when people discard the word, live for God for a little while and they quit, 
life becomes harder for them. Life can become very hard for them. Now, 19, he goes on and says, The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, and by understanding hath he established the heavens. He says, By his knowledge, <clears throat> the depths are broken up, the clouds uh, drop down the dew. Number 21, he says, My son, let them depart, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. 22, so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. It's the value of the word of God. <clears throat> so again, the earth, the world has been established by this word. The worlds were framed by his word. Don't you think God knows what he's doing? All this big planet and all the stars and all the universe was established by God's word. And if he can establish all of that and do all of that, how much more can he do it for us, any, any, many individuals? The Bible says it will be life unto thy soul and grace about thy neck. You can tell a believer, one that follows the word, one that lives the word, you can see a blessing on their life. It's grace to their life. It's, it's honor to their lives. It's a covering over them. Walk in God's word. The Bible says in 23, then shalt thou walk in the way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When you abide by and live for it, God will keep you every day. Why? Because you endeavor to be honest, you endeavor to be true, you endeavor to be pure, you endeavor to uh, keep your heart, mind, and soul, and it keeps you from stumbling. It keeps you from uh, doing things that, again, uh, that, that you should not do, whether it's sin, whether it's bad decision, uh, again, that will be detrimental to the soul. Oh, no, 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 it will keep us from falling, the Bible says. Stay in the word of God. Keep your mind on the word. Stay focused on him. Number 24, he says, when thou liest down and when thou, thou shalt not be afraid. Uh, he says, yea, thou shalt lie down and thou shalt sleep. Thy sleep shall be sweet. Excuse me. Thy sleep shall be sweet. He can go to bed at night knowing all is well. Some folks toss and turn, They're wrestling with things. They're wrestling with problems, wrestling with battles and struggles and problems all and all and all. They wrestle with these things because something is missing. Something's missing in the word. Then again, you can have all the scriptures right and be missing one verse and it will really mess you up. Let us live the word of God. Let us endeavor to abide by it or misuse the word in the wrong way as well. The devil can have you misuse the word of God and twist it around in the wrong fashion. <laughs> Anyway, let's go. The Bible says here, it, it will be sweet sleep to your soul. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked. He says, when it cometh. 26, for the Lord shall be thy countenance, I keep confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. The word of God will help you, it will keep you. It will be thy confidence, your confidence. You stand on God's word, uh, confident in his word. Confident knowing God's going to come through. Confident knowing that God's going to make a way. Confident in all these different things. But what he said, and it will keep you every day. The Bible says here, it will, thy foot, it will keep thy foot from being taken. The enemy comes in. He will try to pull you, snatch your way, or pull you from your standing with God. Again, but staying in God's word, or applying God's word, living God's word, will keep you from being taken. Number 27. He goes into another section about treating your neighbor right as well. Treating your neighbor right. And so one of the first commandments, back we talk about the keeping the law, and we open up this Bible study about keeping the law. One of the first commandments was what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. To love your neighbor as yourself. The world would be much better if we loved our neighbors as ourselves. If we treated people right. And so the Bible tells us here in verse 27, he says, withhold not thy uh, good from them that it is due. He said, when it, uh, power is in thy hand to do it. So again, he's talking about treating your neighbor right. He says, don't withhold uh, things, good things from people. Bless people. Bless people. Be a cheerful giver. When you have power to give it. And sometimes, again, people will take advantage of your, people will take advantage of your uh, generosity. You know what? Again, but you have to be, use discretion with that as well. But help people along the way. And God has been fortunate to you to bless you. Yeah, people have needs. Do that, but 
again, we must keep your guard up as well. We learned it through the years. Keep your guard up because people try to take advantage of you as well. Number 28 says, Say not uh, thou unto thy neighbor. Go and, and come again. He says, Tomorrow I will give when thou hast sit to get by thee. And so don't wait. Don't delay. If you haven't, bless somebody else with it. Number 29, he says, Devise not evil against thy neighbor. Devise not evil against thy neighbor. Uh, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. 30, he says, Strive not with a man without cause, and if he had done thee no harm. And so he talked about being stri striving with folks, fighting with folks. Folks can get along. Again, uh, even some causes are greater than others. People fight, carrying on. You think about this. Again, the Bible says, Blessed is the peacemaker. Blessed is the peacemaker, for they shall see the kingdom of God. Being a peacemaker, being one that, again, you know what? Hey, I'm going to trust God, believe God. I'm going to be at peace. You let people be. You know what I'm saying? And so, again, if you try to find peace with that. You, you endeavor, the Bible says, well, to live peaceably with all men. As much as life things is what it said in the New Testament. As much as life things you live peaceably with all men. Endeavor to do that. To live for God and for, uh, again to, to show love towards man. That's why and Jesus is our prime example. He says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He forgave his enemies. He forgave anybody who did him wrong. Why? Because again, uh, uh, he knew where the source lied from, coming from the devil. He didn't hate the people. He hated the spirit behind the people. So, naturally, we must do the same thing. Let us be men and women that, again, endeavor to be peacemakers in every situation. Number 31, he says, Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. He says, For the fraud is an abomination to the Lord. So the proud, number 32, the proud is an abomination. God hates proud. The Bible says, God resists the proud. We give it grace unto the humble. He says, But his secret is with the righteous. <laughs> So God, it's abomination to do to be this way. Number thirty-three says, "The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but He blesses the habitation of the just." You want a blessing in your home? Kick the wicked out, get sin out, kick the devil out, kick anything associated with the devil out. <laughs> that could be a lot of things, a lot of things that bring a curse about your life. The things you listen to, the things you watch, the people who you let in and out of your house, the things you let go on in your house. It's important. You got to put a stand to say, no, this is the house. Uh, this is a Christian home. We're not going to allow certain things in our home. And so naturally, when, when you refuse to do that, again, uh, the curse will come upon people's homes and their lives because they uh, will not take a stand against sin. You want, to, you want God to bless your house? You got to take a stand against sin. Nope, we're not doing this. We don't do this. We don't do that. Why? Because again, we believe Again, our dwelling place should be a place where that, that we want God's dwelling, God's presence, God's blessing to be upon it. Let's move on. Surely, number 34, he scorned the scorner, but he gave it grace unto the lowly. The scorner, again, those, again, that, that, uh, who mock, again, those that really attack and various things, the scorner. The scorner, he says, he was scorned the scorner, again, at their own game their own things. He will scorn the very ones who are in the business of scorning. And so, again, we talk about the law of sowing and reaping a lot of times. The law of sowing and reaping <clears throat> it will come back. Person of content or disdain. Person of content, of dis contempt or disdain. Contempt or disdain is the definition of it. And so, you think about it, being uh, a disdainful person. God disdains that. And so, he said, I will disdain the scorn. I think about it so God will repay those again who, who, who mistreat, those who do people wrong, those who again uh, uh, again who abuse and various things like this. Everything, the law of sowing and reaping comes back around. If you if you back to what we said, if you're merciful to people, you receive mercy. But if you're constantly attacking people or constantly doing wrong to people, uh, always uh, again fault finding with people. Whatever case may be, I don't know. You pick a category. It will come back to you, the law of sowing and reaping. So he says, I will scorn the scorner. 
He will pay him back in his own game. The Bible says he giveth grace unto the lowly. To the lowly, however. You know what? I'm going to walk humbly. I'm going to take the low road. <laughs> in other words, I, I, we say it's kind of opposite of what I'm trying to say. The high road, the low road. I'm going to take that low road, the humble road. I'm going to take that road, that route. You know what? I don't, I don't, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of that. That's what he says because we know that's where the blessing comes from. Uh, Jesus was meek and lowly. And so naturally, uh, he was blessed because of that. He says today he blesses those that will do the same thing. He said, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He shall lift thee up. When you try to lift yourself up, oh, you got trouble. You got problems. You got real problems. And the Bible says here today, when you cannot humble yourself, and you, and you say, I'm going to do this right now, now, you run into trouble. And before long, you'll find yourself you'll find yourself knocked down. God will find a way to knock you down. God will find a way to bring you low. It may not be in this lifetime. It may be a lot of time. It happens in this lifetime. But God will get the preeminence over it all. The Bible says here in 35, the wise shall inherit glory. The wise. Use wisdom. God's wisdom. Go back and read the book of wisdom. The wise shall inherit glory. Heaven, first of all. But glorious things will happen. God's hand will be upon your life. Things will work out gloriously. Things will seem to work in your favor, as we covered earlier in these verses. Because why? You walk in God's wisdom. Not, not our own wise wisdom. Not some books from, uh, from man, which is it has its part. Again, we encourage you to learn. Learn as much as you can. But again, keep God at the top of the list. You know what I'm saying? As you grow and as you learn, pick up skills and all these other things, always give glory back to God. Do it all. And remember, God's wisdom is the greatest of all wisdoms. The Bible says, but the shame shall be the promotion of fools. Shame shall be the promotion of fools. You see how that sounds... Uh, what do you call it? Oxymoronic. Shame shall be the promotion. You would think it would be a demotion, but God called it a promotion. This is your reward because of foolish things that mankind does. Foolish things bring shame. Sin brings shame. Rejecting God's word eventually will bring shame. Again, so we must not fall into that category. We want, we want God's blessing upon your life. I want God's blessing, God's outpouring. I want my barns to be filled as we shared with you earlier. Again, today, as we take God's word, abide by it, live by it. Proverbs chapter 3 is an awesome chapter as we covered this evening. Proverbs chapter 3, let it be found in thy heart. He says again, we, we'll close with that verse. Let's go back to verse. Uh, let's go back to verse 3. As we close. Excuse me, verse 5. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. And so look at this. God will direct. When God leads you somewhere, God does something for you. God puts you in the right place. He will keep you. He will bless you. He will help you along the way. Through it all. So trust God this year. Trust God. Read the Proverbs. The Proverbs day will keep the devil at bay. At bay. He won't keep him away, but he'll keep him at bay because you have the word of God living down on the inside. God bless our prayer. We look forward to seeing you this Thursday night in person, in person, 334 Asher Street. Come on out with us. Bring a friend. Bring a friend. Amen to the house of the Lord. And then we have Sunday morning at 11 a.m. as well. Come out. Come out. Get somebody to come with you. Let's have a great, great turnout every, every uh, service this year. Let's go higher. Our attendance higher in, in grow. We gained some folks this year. Well, the past year, we gained a few new members. Uh, many of them are faithful. They come uh, during, during the services during the week. And so come, continue to be a part. Bring, bring somebody with you. Tell somebody about the word of the Lord. About 334 Asbury Street. We look forward to seeing you this Thursday night, 730. God bless you. I pray. Have a good night.